I had already done a video on using IAS as a coordination tool and a separate one on using Workbench as a coordination tool, but I thought it would be interesting to do them side by side with exactly the same information. As a result, what I've done is I've set the TV channels to be exactly the same in both. Uh, here's a selection of TV channels there and, and over here um, are a selection of the T channels over here. Uh, down here on the bottom of the IAS uh, screen, the yellow ones are the TV channels I've selected. And I've loaded in the um, scan from um, uh, uh, that city, the city of Tulsa. And in that scan, which you can see in both sites here, uh, there's a DTV station in each one of these sections. Now in IAS, I can select uh, a scan just like that, turn it on, turn it off by right clicking on the picture down at the bottom. Up here I've got to go into the TV channels and select the channels separately to turn them on and off. Now when I did the scans in Tulsa, uh, I actually had done an inside venue scan and an outside venue scan. So here's the inside venue scan and as you see there's uh, hardly any spectrum there that is worth uh, avoiding. So I, but in general, I start out by doing the worst case. That way, uh, it can't be. If I need to get extra frequencies later, then I can go to the other scan and see where I can fit them in. Otherwise, um, the. Uh, Every time you move this little line here, it sets additional exclusions the way it finds. So I'm going to turn that all off because I don't want it to do that. What I did also to make it more of a fair comparison is I adjusted the equipment profiles between the two programs. So for instance, over here, here is the um, uh, SLX J3 settings in here and I SLX J3 and I made them basically the same. So 300 kilohertz, uh, 99 kilohertz for third order, 49 kilohertz for uh, treble beats and 89 kilohertz for fifth order. And I did that with all of the products. So here's the UR, UHFR or UR4D, which is the same thing. Now in IAS, we don't create an inventory of products until we actually go to select our frequencies. But in Workbench, I've created an inventory of the 2050s, the SLX, the BTRs, and I also have to add uh, the Shure um, UHFR. I also have to add uh, Shure PSM 1000s to uh, the order, and these are uh, already edited just to match the same as these. So one th interesting thing to notice difference between IAS and Workbench. In Workbench they have robust standard and more frequencies and all these settings can be different for each one. Whereas in IAS there's only one set of settings and you s turn on and off each one of these depending on which one you want to uh, uh, use. Workbench is a little more flexible because in Rome Robust, I might want to have them further apart. So here we're going to close this. We're going to add some Shure e and ears to here. And I'm going to add 10 of those. So I'm going to start my coordination now uh, with uh, some PSM 1000s in uh, IAS. And over on the right here, you can see the PSM 1000s overlap my F band and my A band in the Sennheisers. So the only places they don't really overlap are in channel 19 and 21. So those are where I'm going to try to fit my in-ears in. I want to turn the options on so they're the most robust. And I'm going to calculate looking for 19 and 21, more in 19 and 21. Okay, we have got 19 and a bunch in 21. Uh, 
I'm going to move those over because I got those. Now I'm going to keep looking for some more 19s and 21. Here's another 19. And I need one more in 19 or 21. So here's 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 frequencies. I'll take one of these away. So there's my PSM 1000s. I'm going to do these manually one at a time, see if they work in it better that way. I'm going to start out with the uh, PSM 1000s. Okay, put the P I'm going to do them in most robust. Now, I don't have a really a way to, I don't have an easy way to uh, force them into be 19 and 21. If I just do a calculate here, it's going to pick them in uh, bands starting at 470, which is way down at the bottom here, and going all the way up to 529, which is way up the top. Basically, it spreads it evenly across the entire band. So I'm going to delete that now, and I'm going to create an inclusion group. Now, that's a group that uh, I can force something into. And here we're going to create for this test, this is going to be our test inclusion. And here in this test, I'm going to create a PSM 1000. One. And I'm going to say channel uh, 19 and 21. So now I've created an inclusion group. Now I have to go back to my inventory and select the PSM 1000s. Go to coordination and I have to put them in the PSM 1000 inclusion group and apply it. Now sometimes this doesn't always work. Uh, it it's, doesn't always include, add to it. So what I have to do is delete these, add new device, sure, 10 groups, and I add them. Now when you look at it, you see they're all added there. So it's not, doesn't edit the way it's supposed to. So now I go back in here into frequency coordination, and I select my frequencies from the file. And I select the PSM 1000s. And I do a calculate. And it stuck them in 19 and 21, exactly the way I wanted to put them. Actually, what I really want is more is robust. So I'm going to redo the calculate. And it sucked them in 1921 again. So I can see they're up to here in 1920 when they've added them in. Okay, so now we've got our PSM. Now we're going to add the BTR band. So over here, I'm going to add my, my Telex BTR 800 F band. And again, these are going to be the most stringent settings. And I'm going to do calculate, and I want the Fs to be in 16 and 18. So here we are in 16 and 18. So I'm going to pick 4, 2 and 16, 2 and 18. So here's my BTR. PTR TXX. Okay, now I'm going to go over here and do the BTRX. Let's see what happens if we don't do that. Because all that's left is the two bands down there and they don't overlap. So here, select frequencies. I'm going to get the BTR, which are these four right here. 
put them on, do a most robust, and I do a calculate. Bingo, I've got them. 